The Max Cape. Many adventurers strive to obtain this cape, but only the most capable will succeed. I, on the other hand, will speedrun this cape in world record time. With all the necessary quests completed, we are moving on to the real skilling stage of the run. After hours of theory crafting the best possible route, I will use and showcase never seen before skilling methods and strategies to save as much time as possible to not only secure the world record for fastest Maxcape, but also the longest speedrun in the world. My name is Heboxjonge, and this is my grind to the fastest Maxcape. Quick recap of the last episode. First we had to get our fire making up to make an infernal axe. This didn't go as smoothly as planned since we ran into a weird stalling bug that had to do with inactive drift nets. But after that bug was resolved and after we hit 85 fire making we started and we also finished 99 wood cutting with 1.5 tick ticks. But before we dive into today's episode, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Hero Wars. Hero Wars is an online action RPG that has 6 unique modes, more than 300 Guild War servers and 100 million players. Hero Wars is a game where everyone can find a character to suit themselves. We have cyborgs, aliens, vampires and even furries won't be disappointed. My favorite hero is Jabba. He's an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. But if you manage to unlock Celeste, she is the real S tier. She can switch between a DPS dark form and a healer light form, which makes her useful in any situation. There's no equal to Hero Wars. You're gonna play it on the subway, at lectures or even while playing something else. You can play alone or challenge your friends to see who has the best team of heroes. And it's very easy to start playing. But assembling the perfect team of heroes is an art in itself. But I happen to have the perfect solution to start building your team. Join the game now and get a super chest with 5 top heroes, one of them is secret. As well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan the QR code or download the game from the link in the description below. I'll see you in game. Thanks again for Hero Wars for sponsoring the video. Download it and start playing right now. Hey, what's up gamers? We are starting where we left off last video with planting mahogany trees. And I quickly want to talk about farming since I yeah, haven't really talked about that that much. But the plan for farming is very simple. I'm just going to do yeah, mahogany trees when I can since those are like the best XP. Since there are three trees very close together, so the XP per hour is very high. But once we hit 72 farming, I will also do magic trees with a boost uh, for my garden pie. To speed up the yeah the farming process a little bit, otherwise I'm not going to be able to finish farming before we yeah, have all the other 99s. And once we have the level to plant dragon fruit trees, we will also be doing those. And yeah, that's pretty much the plan for farming. Just do a daily run of magics and dragon fruits and then do mahoganies when we can. And during the woodcutting streams, everyone in the chat was asking what was next after woodcutting. And I told everyone that artifacts and thieving like, was the next thing I'm, I was going to do. But then the next day after I finished 99 woodcutting, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do something else first that should have been done a long time ago. And that is construction. When theory crafting the route for this account, construction was actually like the second thing that I did on this account after prayer. But at the time I wasn't feeling like doing construction, so I skipped over it and just continued on with questing. And of course it would be efficient if I had the construction cape like right away since the teleports to all the POH places is pretty useful for questing. So I did lose some time, but at the time construction was something I wasn't looking forward to. But yeah, now I just somehow was looking forward to construction, so I um, hopped straight in and tried to learn this method. I did practice this method on an alt for like 30 minutes, so that is why I am yeah pretty much getting one to one in my first hour already. And the main reason why I was like not wanting to do construction was pretty much that I yeah was inexperienced with that method and I wasn't looking forward to learning it. But actually. After I discovered a few like little tricks that I will share with you very soon. This method was actually really chill and I think I enjoyed this more than doing mahogany tables. And the faster XP rate also made this method more enjoyable I think. Construction is just very straightforward so I will just be explaining the method and then we move on to something else. Well as you can see I am doing mahogany benches and the benches are the best way to train construction. 
all the way to 99. Benches are slightly faster than tables, XP per hour wise. This is because you get to remove the last bench in the cycle, opposed to having to wait a tick and remove the table after you got the planks with the butler. The cycle for benches is as follows. After you receive your planks, you build one bench, then remove it, send your butler away on the same tick, build your first bench on the same tick as your butler gets sent away, remove it, and on the same tick you remove it, you build another one, and do that two times. And for the last bench, you also remove that one, and then you get your planks back from your butler. And for tables, the cycle is a little bit different. Since when you get your planks, there's still a table, so you have to remove that first, then build one and remove it. Send your butler away, and on the same tick as the butler gets sent away, you build your next table, and just build all your tables until the last one. And the last one, you can't remove it in time for the butler, so you just have to wait a tick, and then the butler comes, and then you have to remove it again and repeat. It seems like something small, but since the cycle is so short, only 4 benches, it does the XP rate by around 150k. So it goes from 950k with tables to close to 1.1 mil XP an hour with benches. Saving you a little bit over 1 hour on your way till 99. Now for some tips and tricks on this method. You want your client to be like, pretty big, this is the only method that I will allow such a fortnite sized client. So after you make your way to, over to the benches, you want to zoom in and get the screen markers in place, so they will always cover the benches. This way you can take advantage of the, the right click menu being like pushed upwards, that way the option that you want is like right under where we right clicked. So you can just do right click left click to build and remove the benches. Now, a very useful plugin to make your life a thousand times easier while doing this method. It is called Custom Menu Swaps, you find this in the plugin hub. And type in a box under Custom Heights, sit on with an asterisk and walk here, but also with an asterisk. This prevents you from sitting on the bench or, or when you misclick walking under the building spot for the bench, ruining your angle. So definitely have these turned on while, when you're doing this method and you're never gonna move. So the angle will always be the same. Make sure to turn it off though once you're done with construction. Otherwise you're not able to walk anywhere. I also have a very simple trick for knowing when to press what button to build and remove the tables. I use two keyboards. One keyboard has an object pressing down the one key and the main keyboard I press the two button every time I need to build a table and that, that's pretty much it. And after all my boring explaining we are suddenly very close to 99, but I'm gonna stop around 20k off 99 since I still have to decorate my house a little bit and that XP can't go to waste. First I made all the pools, so now we have an ornate pool in our POH. Next I added some rooms and messed with the layout a little bit. Then I made a portal nexus, so we can use that to get to certain slayer locations. I also made a big jewelry box. Not sure how much I'm gonna need this, but it's nice to have anyway. Then after making the fairy ring, so we can get to Dagonauts and Calvice for Slayer, I made one portal and and managed to get 49 XP of 99. So we had to go back to the bank, losing some time. But there it is, 99 construction. After spending 190 mil on the planks and 5 mil on the butler, we also picked up the skill cape since this one is quite useful, not needing house tabs anymore and having unlimited teleports to all the PUH portals. If you liked the video, please like the video. And if you enjoyed the series, please consider subscribing. We're really close to 30k, it would be cool to hit that before the end of this year. Oh, and don't forget to hit the notification bell while you're subscribing. Now, full steam ahead. If you can remember from the last episode when we got our fire making up, we also got 81 Herbore, allowing us to boost to 85 for the Ancient Brew. The Ancient Brew is a very useless potion by itself, it just boosts the magic level by a little bit and restores some prayer. But for training Herbore it's 
very good since the secondary ingredient is stackable. That is the Nile Dust you see in my inventory. So we can fill our entire inventory with potions and gain some massive herbal XP since it gives 190 XP per potion. And again, artifacts is the best place to multi skill these skills. So we're gonna do artifacts all the way to 99 thieving with herblore and fire making. And at first, I just did a combination of fire making and herblore. So I banked, grabbed nine logs, and dressed barfeet potions. Because if you light fires while running west, you sometimes can skip uh, a few tiles because you get like teleported because of the fire making animation. So I thought it would be quicker to do it this way to light fires only going west and do potions going east but it, i ended up making mistakes not bringing the botanical pie and yeah just messing up in general with banking so i decided to get 85 herbal out of the way first and then do fire making only when doing just fire making at the start i was banking and trading logs but that kind of slowed down my thieving rate a lot so i decided to switch to just banking so the alt was not really helping anymore. That made the laps way more consistent and my thieving went up quite a bit and the fire making only went down like 10k. In this clip you can see me use some new plugins. The first one, the path marker. This is the red tiles on the ground. This is very useful to see where your true tile is going to be in a certain amount of ticks. And you might have seen the blue number above my head that is counting to 4. That one is called the visual metronome. This one is really good for making sure that you stay on the fire making cycle. In this case, I start lighting my first lock on tick 4, or the number 4 above my head. And because the fire making cycle is 4 ticks, I click a lock again every time the timer jumps to 4 again. Attempting to light earlier will result in your character stopping to play the animation, and waiting longer than 4 ticks will cause your character having to relight or bend over. And when arriving at Captain Kellett with still some locks in your inventory, you can try to quickly light a lock after delivering and getting a new task from him. And also when you get to the crafting guilds, you can try to do a knife lock into lighting a lock for some extra fire making XP. This will only cost you around 1k thieving XP per hour. And you could gain around 20k fire making XP if done properly. And when teleporting back to Zaya, you also want to pre-click your knife lock so you can start fire making immediately. Now it's best if I explain how to set up your accounts and how to set up the guards for this method and also explain the house rules of this method. To make this method consistent good XP per hour you need to set up the patrolman guarding the main access of the city. One to the east bridge and one to the southeast. To set this up get a task from Captain Kellett then make your way over to the assigned house and steal the artifact. Preferably you get one on the south side like this one. After you stole the artifact, you want to make your way over to this spot, next to the guard. Then step next to the pillar, and run under this patrol guard, and go up the ladder to the aggro. That is one out of two guards set up. Then make your way all the way over to the other one. And the guard has to be facing towards the west, otherwise you have to do it from the other side. And make sure to map out your tiles so that you are like not standing next to him for one tick and walking under him. And after you stepped under him, you teleport away and he's all set up. And while running past them, make sure to keep one tile distance, otherwise they will turn around again. And that brings us to the first house rule. Don't be that guy who doesn't know how to set up the guards and just looks for a world with the guards already set up. Which is impossible, by the way, since you just watched how to set up the guards. But if you still don't know how to do it, don't be that guy that just logs into a random world find someone else doing the method and then get caught ruining the guard lure and also ruining the gaming experience from the other skiller. So if you want to do this method but are not confident in your skills in not messing up the guards, just find a free world and then set the guards up yourself and every time you mess up you can just reset them without griefing others. Another thing you can do is have an alt hold Captain Kellett in place. For this to work you need to wait for him to get past the yellow tile that you see on the right and I have an NPC helping me blocking off the other paths a little bit and after he walks over the yellow tile stand on that and have the NPC attack you so you can just six hour log here and now the captain is blocked on this side of the table saving you a couple ticks every lap you can also have him positioned even closer to the door on these tiles and then you have to stand on the orange one 
But this rarely happens and isn't worth waiting for to do this method. And that brings us to house rule number two. Don't be this guy who is also doing the method on the same world as someone else who has a blocking alt. Or even worse, someone who's doing a clue scroll on the same world. And then after talking to Captain Kellett, just oops, misclicking and walking under the the blocking account and ruining the Captain Kellett lure. And in the meantime, I already finished fire making. Well, not completely finished, but I'm stopping at 12.5 mil XP since the last 500k is pretty doable during farm runs and other stuff. So I'm switching to Herbro now, so getting the Lyle Dust and the Dwarf Reed potions. And I will be using my alt for trading over more potions since they run out quite a bit faster than the logs. With that being said and the house rules explained, it is time to get straight to the business. Yo, if you paid attention, you probably saw me skip past this middle card at some point in the video. You need to pass this bridge if you were assigned any of the three western houses. The safest way to do this is always start on the white tile. And if you are coming from the northwest house, you want to pass to the orange tile first and then to the white tile. Then you want to move to one of the two safe spots, depending on the position of the guard that is walking a lap. The orange tile is always safe. Once the guard that does the lap is past the bridge, then you can stand next to the guard that is walking back and forward. And when he turns around, you are free to move. There's also another way to pass this bridge. When the guard is walking towards you, when you are like about to leave the house, you can pass to the white tile and then immediately turn the corner and skip past the bridge entirely. Mastering this technique will really bump your XP rates to new levels. So as you can see, I'm getting like 250k thieving XP per hour. And that is pretty much the same XP as you're going to get at Plunder at this level. And on top of that, I am getting a lot of Herbro XP. Almost 300k an hour, which is like 0.7 EHP. So this method is basically just 1.7 EHP. And there we go. That is 98 Herbro. And this is the last level that we're going to get uh, at this method. For Herbro at least. Since we're pretty close to 99 thieving. Another really useful thing to do if you have another account is to set it up at this bridge so you can always keep an eye on the guards even when your other account is upstairs looting the artifact. But after a while of doing this method you'll just learn to look at the guards right before you go up the ladder so you know their position when you're gonna be downstairs again. But now it's already time to say goodbye to artifacts. Since we are closing in on 99th evening it's time to move on and finish Herbror somewhere else. And at first I kind of disliked doing artifacts. I was getting really annoyed when I got caught by the guards. And that happened a bit too often <laughs> at the start. But, but at the end I got a lot more comfortable with the method. And yeah, it was actually really chill. Especially Herb Roar was just reclining. And the HP gained from this method was also insane for how easy it is. I definitely recommend you try out this method. But please, 
follow the house rules. And there it is, 99 thieving. That brings the total 99 count to 6. And straight after we did a mahogany run, since I haven't done any farming in the all of 99 thieving. And this run brings us to 72 farming, so now we can boost for magic trees. And I'm gonna finish 99 Herblore at Sepulchre. I only have to do like 800k more, which is gonna take around 12 hours, I think, to do. But that is all there is for today's episode. 99 Herblore will have to wait. I am also starting runecrafting in the next one, and I already have a very talented team of runners, so I don't need your help for that one. I'm not sure how long it will take me since I'm relying on other people, but once we are done with runecrafting, we can start a slayer grind if you want, since I will be able to do the Karami Elite. But there's also an EHP competition running in December, hosted by Temple OSRS, and I would like to try and finish 99 Agility during that competition. So Slayer will still have to wait a little bit, and I will be streaming a lot during that competition, so keep an eye out for that. Now it's time for some statistics. We started today's episode with these stats on the left, and at the end we managed to get two more 99s and two other skills very close to 99, giving us these stats. And for a better visual to seeing the levels gained this episode, you can see the image on the right. But having gained 90 EHP this episode, we managed to get 500 total EHP, crossing the halfway point of the max gap. But we also hit some cool milestones for the costs in this episode. We already have spent 4.85 bill on the account so far. And in this episode we did two pretty expensive skills, being Construction and Herblore. Construction did cost us 195 mil, and Herblore cost us 215 mil, since the Ancient Brew is a pretty expensive potion, around 19 GP per XP. That brings the total amount of GP spent over 5 bill, 5.26 bill to be exact. And now that we know that our playtime is 387 hours, we can calculate the GP spent per hour playtime. And by dividing 5.26 bill by 387, we get a number of 14 mil GP spent per hour playtime. And that will probably go up even more in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really enjoying making this series and you guys make it even better. So thank you for that. And also a massive thanks to my patrons. You are all beasts. I hope I can get the next video out a little bit sooner than this one. But more on that soon. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. A boxing out from the command center.